So here's a reaction that can take place. Um, we're going to use monosaccharides and show how they can be cyclic. And all of the different ways we've been looking at them so far, there are these sort of like long um, molecules that are linear and, and um, you know, straight. But we're going to show how they can become cyclic. So here's uh, we're going to make a hemiacetal. And just to remind you, a hemiacetal reaction looks a bit like this. So if we have some sort of ketone or aldehyde, we're going to react it with an alcohol group in the presence of acid. I'm not gonna go through the mechanism for it, but the basic overall reaction is this. This can be the H or the R. And now we've got an OCH3. Okay, so we've got a new methoxy group that's been added. We have an alcohol that's here. And this is our hemiacetal. Okay, so let's take a look at how that might work in a uh, monosaccharide becoming a cyclic sugar. So these two are the exact same molecule. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons in a row. If I number them like so, it's a good idea. This is still carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. Also pay attention to the stereochemistry. On carbons uh, two, four, and five, these OHs are on the same side of the molecule. Now five is just sort of pointing off here because I have it twisted because there's going to be a reaction here, but two and four are definitely on the same side, here and here. Uh, three is on an opposite side, up here. Now, the electrons here are going to grab onto this, kicking these electrons out, and it's going to end up making a new bond here. So now I've got a cyclic molecule, and all the stereochemistries and everything else has stayed the same. Now here's the, here's the important thing. This carbon uh, acyl group here is flat and planar. It's sp2 hybridized. That means that when this oxygen attacks, it can attack from one side or the other side. And when it attacks in such a way that um, the OH or the new OH that ends up being formed is sort of below this plane, what we end up getting is a alpha projection for this. So this would be considered alpha D glucose. And this, because the OH is above, meaning that this attack came from below, the new bond we form is here, and this would be considered a beta D glucose. And there's a big difference between those two molecules and the kinds of things that they can form. Okay? So um, in general, this is an equilibrium. And in this equilibrium, we tend to see things that are on the beta side here, roughly 64% of the time. And we see this um, just about 36% of the time. And we see things in the linear form less than 1% of the time. Uh, your book gives it a 0.02%. Okay? So this is an equilibrium. It goes back and forth. And it's a cyclic hemiacetal. And the things you want to pay attention to are the um, stereochemistries here. So if these OHs are on the right, we tend to show them pointing down. If they're on the left, we tend to show them pointing up. And that preserves the stereochemistry as we go through this. Now, um, a aldopentose, one, two, three, four, five carbons, so just numbering from the top, two, three, four, and five. So this is one, uh, let's see here, two, three, four, and five. All these OHs are on the same side, so I'm going to have them pointing down. Okay. Uh, four, four's OH is the one that's going to be doing the attacking, so which way it's pointing up or down doesn't really matter. It's got a spare pair of electrons here. It's going to end up attacking at this point. So that means that I can form an OH above, or I can form an OH below. The other OHs are there as well. Okay, uh, I've I start this with um, the same number of OHs. So I have these two OHs that are sort of preserved on carbons two and three, and I have a new one that's on carbon one. Okay, so those are the different reactions. And again, these are equilibria. So if I've got a five-membered, if I have one, two, three, four, five carbons in here, I end up getting a five-membered ring. These right here, when we form six-membered rings, these are known as pyranose. And um, 
if we're forming a five-membered ring, these are known as furanos. Okay, so these are classes of compounds. So this would be a, uh, a glucopurinose, and this would be a ribofurinose. That is, it's a ribose as a cyclic furanose, and it's a glucose as a cyclic purinose. <clears throat> now this is uh, fructose right here, and we're going to end up forming a five-membered ring from that. So, the oxygen atoms here are going to be able to do the attacking here. So the equilibrium that we'll end up seeing, that's the structure of it. One, two, three, four, uh, five, and six. So we need to have six carbons in here. So here are one, two, three, and four. This carbon right here, four, is the one that did the attacking. So it's got this CH2OH attached to it. That's this one. So this carbon five is the one that did it. So it's got this CH2OH. This is carbon four. It's below. This is carbon three. It's above. This is the carbon that was attacked. So it can have the OH above or below. And then attached to that was also this CH2OH. Okay. So that is one of the things that can be formed. The other thing that could be formed, depending on the stereochemistry of it all, is this. Here's my CH2OH. Again, OH down, OH up, and here I could have the OH up and the CH2OH down. Okay, so we can have these two different things being formed, so just sort of keep that in mind. Some of the questions you'll be asked are you're given a certain molecule and what does it look like in a cyclic fashion? This is what it looks like.